And now for our weekly news segment. Hello, Tony. Tony. Hey, guys. How's What's it going? going on? I see the sunshine. Yeah. I want some warmth. <laughs> I just came back from Miami. <laughs> Whatever. Damn. You're yeah. living the life, Tony. Well, I've seen, at all. Yeah, it was cool. I've seen Pump on Wednesday, and he gave a speech. He talked about uh, his investments, Bitcoin for a little bit, and then... <laughs> So I was going to be that guy and, yeah. ask, and then ask about Monero. But like people were asking questions about their startups and very specific. So I didn't want to get away. You know, I didn't want to intervene and because they were limited the amount of questions that could be given. You're too nice. I know. I, I mean, was right with, up there. And he just <laughs> literally we just would have jumped on stage. <laughs> with the mic. Mic. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about Monero? Do you want to come to the conference? <laughs> Basically. Yeah. That's, but that's cool. Like yeah, and I couldn't talk to him after because after he was done, he's like, "All right," and then he just he walked out, just like that mm. other guy when we met at the, yeah. that other conference. Remember the guy running for? Oh no, the the congressman. What was his the name? Congress, uh, well, oh, well, <laughs> I have to talk to the children. <laughs> yeah, I know the but students, the students, the, not the children. The students, <laughs> Sorry. The students. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the news. Take yep. it away, man. Yep. Take it away, my Beautiful. friend. You wanna share Let this me... Yes. Let's do that. And there's so much love in the chat. We have uh, Kqual wishing good morning. Foxcoid, I love you all. Ian, Vic. Then we have Twitter. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Awesomeness. Yeah, so people were asking, will we be streaming the event? Yeah, we will. We will be streaming Monerotopia. Well, I mean, if everything works out. That is the plan. Uh, <laughs> once we, once we our figure that out, we're going to add a ticket for it it'll be a virtual ticket if you want to watch it live that day otherwise all the videos will put up you know for free and you can access them like maybe two weeks later once we can edit everything yeah, what, same as we did last year but yeah same as last year we'll, we're gonna add a virtual ticket most likely yep and talking about tickets so we actually gave away all the vip tickets so they're sold out but if you still want to get the general admission ticket what you can do is you go to buy tickets what are you doing? <laughs> then you add the cart, and then you actually go inside the cart to view the cart, and then you should write the group the coupon code uh, called oh, Tony. 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 Oh, you get you get ten percent off. Where's my? Ah. my... Ah, your code didn't work. It didn't work. Did it, it expire? Oh, no. it's okay. probably expired. Um, yeah, remember I changed. Yeah, your code it expired. Yeah. Ah. Uh, but don't worry, I will. We'll give you a new code. We'll give you a new code. It's, it's coming back, guys. I'll do, I'll do it right now. Keep talking. Move on. Okay. <laughs> All right, move on to the news. And okay. you, you could even pay with Firo, actually, if you don't want to pay with Monero. You could use now payments. Uh, you could pay with any crypto you want. I think, I think literally everyone that bought a ticket has used Monero and has used the Monero gateway so far. But we do have now yeah. payments on there as well if you want to use uh, some other crypto to buy your ticket. Beautiful, awesome, awesome. Uh, so then let's mention Monero, uh, Monero Con while we're at it, and they're actually selling tickets right now. Um, their conference is going to be on June 23rd through June 25th in uh, Czech Republic, and the ticket is $132 for the general admission, and the VIP is going to be 264 um, euros, euros, dollars. It's one to one. So yeah. Um, yeah. Very excited for that. Yep, that's awesome. Oh, wait, June 23rd, June 25th. I might actually make it this time. We'll see. Last yeah, time. we were we were speaking to the guy pretty much coordinating it. Um, yeah. And uh, we're excited. We're, oh, trying, yeah. we're trying to get him to come to Monerotopia. Yeah, he that'd be awesome. The one that would be representing uh, Rhino if he comes by. So All right, we're, Code we're Tony on. should work now, yeah. just saying. Oh. <laughs> 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 He's back. Very excited it for <laughs> Monero <laughs> Conference. Awesome. Yep, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, now let's talk about Cake Wallet and the fact that they just released uh, their desktop um, app, which I've been wanting uh, to use for a long, long time, and now it's finally available. It's only for Apple Silicon M1 and M2 chips so far as a beta version, but then it's coming to Linux and Windows as well. Um, if you actually want to help them to um, uh, to test it, make sure that you follow this link and that you chat with them and let them know what you think and um what's cool is that i noticed in the plan of features they're going to implement a coin price uh chart screen and a news screen so 
Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Psychic. And more secret stuff. So. <laughs> and more secret stuff. <laughs> the news screen should just be a live feed of you, Tony, just like saying the news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and like four hours stuff. a day, seven days a week. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Streaming live. Cake. <laughs> cake. You got to see Gratutu's coffee behind me. I'll drink like uh, two liters per day just to keep it up. <laughs> keep myself up, actually. Uh, Very exciting to see, though, the continued. Uh, obviously, yeah. cake always lunging forward with development yes actually i was talking to someone at the conference uh, or meetup not conference meetup <laughs> and uh, he knew about monero monero topia cake wallet he's actually using cake wallet and then i gave him some monero in the cake wallet nice Go, Tony. yeah so that was awesome uh but now let's talk about el salvador and their mega prison so um yeah, this is crazy and we're gonna watch a video in a, in a second which is amazing that they that we even have a video of it because they show how they move them from where they were before in the bosses and then to their next location uh but yeah the situation in salvador um is was and still is pretty bad with uh with crime so they so far moved 2000 accused gang members to the 40,000 person capacity prison considered to be the largest in the um, Americas. And let's actually watch uh, the video right now. Second. process yeah so it's why yeah, that's, that's uh yes i mean so the the whole situation down there is very interesting because obviously they, he's managed to clean up crime i mean faster than any other world leader for their country it's pretty insane what they've done over there i think the, yes. the homicide rate has plummeted uh but they did it in a way i believe i don't know the details but i believe you know there were uh, essentially concessions made right R laws passed in congress that allowed them to do it in such a way where they weren't going through traditional due process to get these guys off the street so it's controversial um it's you know bukele right so he's at, he's He's, try, he's trying to usher in liberty and prosperity with Bitcoin, but also doing that in a very, um, you know, totalitarian type of way, ironically, <laughs> right? So kind of mandating yes. its usage. Uh, and then you see him taking these harsh moves over here, which, you know, it's hard to argue, right? It's He's, he's making it a more secure and safe place to live. Uh, but once again, he's doing it. Uh, with an iron fist and in a way that might be uh in humanitarian right uh but then some people said that um you have no idea what you're talking about only salvadorans know what this crime criminals have put us through i'll advise anyone who thinks this is horrible to do some research and then you can come to your own conclusions for us this is heaven and then if we scroll down murder rate went near zero almost overnight yeah jesus yeah, but this how, is how do you seven. argue against against that? So yeah, it is dehumanizing. But that's and, also the ultimate argument that you can make for solving all crime, right? Right, like, right, right. Um, so it's it's controversial. We'll see how we'll see how it plays out. I don't know enough of, enough about it, but <sighs> yeah, I don't you, know. You would like to see things done in a in a. I, I mean, me personally, in you know, a more democratic and liberty-minded way right. get to the same outcome but obviously it's not as easy as as taking harsh steps like this to get 
immediate results. But you know, that's the same thing as saying, you know, let's let's put a let's put a camera in everybody's home because they'll they'll never be crime again, right? So, uh -huh. <laughs> I don't think anybody would, you know. But if you saw the if you saw the results overnight, you know, all yeah. crime plummeted. It's it's amazing. Um, yeah. But you know, what are you going to sacrifice as a society? So it's 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 interesting because it's you know, it, is El Salvador this bastion of, of liberty or is it becoming this kind of if, its own form of dystopia over there? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know what to say about this, uh, but and what other ways they could have <laughs> prevented this crime? But uh, it, I guess it, the numbers show that it worked in some way. Um, it's interesting. What What is Alex Gladstein saying about this? <laughs> I mean, you know, because oh obviously God, he's very, Alex. very pro Bitcoin. I think he he was very much aligned with what they were doing down there. Yeah, uh, for Bitcoin, and now on this issue as you know the human rights foundation i'm curious what their take is on this i don't, I don't, I don't know um he mostly i didn't see what he thinks about that specifically but we'll get into what he thought about something else oh, okay. um, so i'll make what i want what I wanna, yeah well yeah um what i want to mention right now is that only 1.6 percent of remittances were sent via bitcoin and one third of Latin American consumers have used stable coins for everyday purchases, um, which is very interesting because so in the US, um, and actually let's go to um, a chart. So it says that in the US, 80% of the purchases are made through cash and 20% through USDC, but in the rest of the world, uh, which is mostly, I think, um, cause it's not so popular in Europe, but in Latin America it's very popular for sure. Um, around 22% of the transactions are made via, I think, dollars, 22% in their local currencies, and then 56% via um, USDC, so a stable coin. And um, if we go to this website, and then we'll go back to Alex, Alex uh, Gladstein and what he mentioned. Um, Yes, people in Latin America are actually very optimistic about uh, digital assets. 54% are optimistic about them. Two thirds of Latinos want greater flexibility to use crypto and traditional payment methods. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of them are using USDC and stable coins for day-to-day -day purchases. And now uh, Alex Gladstein asked um, if he has different data about El Salvador, obviously, because they use um, Bitcoin. Um, I mean, it's legal tender, so you think that it may be used more than any other method. Um, either way, I agree. Bitcoin use cannot be imposed. It must be learned and done in a grassroots uh, fashion. Um, so indicators of access, use, and quality of financial services in El Salvador is available here. Oh, okay. What are parameters? But yeah, I mean, uh, so stable coins are used the most. In, in Latin America and Bitcoin is not used um, as much as you'd think that it is. Right. The organic adoption is actually happening with stable coins. With, yeah. So stable coins instead of, uh, instead of uh, Bitcoin. Yeah. But I'm not sure what he thinks about, um, what Alex thinks about um, Nayib Bukele's way of uh, implementing things in the country, <laughs> which so, so far has been by the use of force. Um, yeah, but it'll be interesting to see what he thinks about it. Maybe we're going to back on um, Monero talk. <laughs> I don't think he'll ever come back. He'll now. never come back. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, that was so a great episode you guys. It was back in the day before Alex. Most He wasn't very well known at all back then. I recommend people go check that one out. It was a good one. <laughs> I actually didn't watch it, so I should watch it. I didn't watch that episode. There are a few people <laughs> Doug has had on. And they were <laughs> back on. <laughs> it wasn't contentious, but whatever. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Yes. Oh, yeah. And then another one with Alex. So they were talking about um, El Salvador's official cryptocurrency remittances and that they continue to stagnate. So in October 2021, when I, that's when around Bitcoin became legal tender, uh, the number was 4.5% of all transactions, of all methods of transacting. And then by November, one month later, it dropped down to 2%. So it halved immediately. And then ever since, um, the percentage of all remittances sent to El Salvador are between 1.6% to 1.8%. But now in December 2022, 
we've seen a low of 1.4%. Uh, then Alex um, commented, any idea what the real numbers are, including peer-to-peer -peer and unofficial markets, which is a good question. Mm. And then um, Gerson Martinez um, uh, replied back that he doesn't have reliable data on unofficial or peer-to-peer markets. Uh, but he, but the major uh, drawback and a major barrier for remittances, remittance senders is their limited ability to exchange the cash for Bitcoin because a lot of them are unbanked. So uh, this is one major issue that, that uh, they're seeing. Uh, now let's talk about uh, Bitcoin and the fact that one US legislator introduced a bill that would prohibit the creation of an American CBDC. Um, so U.S. Congressman Tom Emmer introduced a bill, uh, which is called titled the CBDC Anti-Surveillance State Act, and it's looking to prohibit the Federal Reserve from issuing a CBDC directly to, to anyone. And then to summarize um, the bill and the article, it essentially does three things. Prohibits the Fed from issuing a CBDC directly to anyone, bars the Fed from using a CBDC to implement monetary policy and control the economy, requires the Fed CBDC projects to be transparent to Congress and the American people. So any digital version of the dollar must uphold our American values of privacy, individual sovereignty, and free market competitiveness. Anything less opens the door to the development of a dangerous surveillance tool. Which Tom, is Tom Emmer, I've been trying to get him on the show for years. Oh, wow. So, you know, that, that's the litmus test, right? So he's out there. He's all pro-privacy. Come on, come on, Monero talk, Tom. Come on. <laughs> come on. Like, you know, that, that's kind of the, the test. He should be willing to come on Monero talk and talk about these ideas and Monero. He's, I don't think he's ever mentioned Monero and his take as to whether or not, you know, where, where he stands with regards to it. But he, you know, he is doing a great job. He's very, he's very pro privacy. Yes. Um, he's a, uh, he's worried about the elimination of cash and what that means for society. He's kind of the closest thing we have to a pro Monero congressman, um, you know, without without saying it. So, cheers to him. This is this is interesting to see. But with this, you got to wonder too, right? So this, uh, you know, totally. I, I like where he's headed with this. Um, but is it because he wants to protect privacy, or is it is he looking out for the interests of the, of the banks, the the small banks that mm -hmm. are, are would suffer from a CBDC, right? So that's kind of the dynamic you're seeing. Uh, the regular retail banks uh, would essentially, you would think, would be opposed to a central bank digital currency because it kind of takes away some of the business that they're in. Uh, if you know we're getting if we're getting our dollars essentially directly from the Fed through central bank digital currency. So I'm curious if that's playing a role in uh, this, you know, this legislation that's being pushed forward. Right, right. But he, he did talk about Bitcoin. I think he mentions Bitcoin. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. He mentions Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin. Which yeah, is yeah. Very, he's very much pro Bitcoin. I'm saying but Monero, right? He also talks about yeah. he also talks a lot about uh, being, you know, pro privacy and, you know, uh, yeah. digital cash needs to be private. But he doesn't go so far as to uh, talk about Monero. Yeah, so let's try to get him get him on the show. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, go in the comments and. <laughs> <laughs> I was emailing. I was emailing with them. We almost got him on, and oh wow, this was last year. Especially when I had just run for Congress, so there was a little bit of a you know, we had a yeah. little bit of a, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll try again. Yeah. <laughs> um. Now let's talk about, so you might think, okay, so he doesn't like ICBDC, but uh, let's talk about why nobody should like ICBDC. And um, so this article talks about five ways in which CBDCs could impact the global financial system. So uh, number one, digitalization of payments, which is of course um, a good thing if it's done in the right way, like Monero, where it's respecting privacy and you have fungibility and scalability and everything. So it's like cash, but digital. This way, it's it's great because you know cash is it's dirty and you don't need to carry so much of it every single time. So something like Monero is awesome, in this in this aspect. So payments will be digital and they should be digital in in the future, but done the right way. Uh, then they talk about the reduced use of 
of cash um, and cash usage will drop with the introduction of, uh, of CBDCs. And this is, of course, for central banks to monitor cash movements and toward fraud and other criminal activity. They always mention this. Then they also mention increased financial stability, stability which essentially means that they, they can um, prohibit people from uh, committing a bank run. So in ter when there's still financial times, people can just withdraw their money, but they're obviously trying to work their ways around that to make it um, harder to do. Um, then they will implement interest, interest rate management, um, then uh, spending limits. So you can spend only so much and it starts to get it starts to sound worse and worse as you get out of this. <laughs> they can completely control your money, yeah. do all your transactions, they Real can program data. it so you can only use it for certain things. Yes. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. And negative interest rates. <laughs> there you go. Which means that you need to spend. Like, yeah. yeah, and you know, this is something, like I said, this is going to affect the retail banks as well. So you're starting to see this dynamic of yeah. the retail banks that are going to be opposed to CBDCs and, you know, this other force of nature that is pro-CBDC. That's that's where you're really seeing the power play and the split. Yes. But I think... You know, and then you have us too, like, no, privacy. But I'm saying the real strength is going to come from people that stand to lose big businesses that stand to lose money from the implementation of a CBDC. Right. And that's where you're going to see the true pushback. And, you know, obviously they're going to disguise it as being, you know, that they're pro cash and pro privacy as well. But mm -hmm. um, I think that's where we're going to start to see the, the pushback against CBDCs. Well, actually, yeah. Well, actually um, we had an article on the show a couple of months ago from Russia and um um, the ministry was actually pushing CBDC while the banks were against CBDC. And the article talked about how one wants it, but the other one doesn't want it. Exactly. For things like, for reasons that you mentioned. And the Ruben wrote in the comments, agree, I'm very sad about the whole move towards uh, cashless. Uh, that demonization of cash is disgusting. Yeah, this is all disgusting stuff. Again, I'm, I'm pro uh, cashless if it's something like uh, Monero, because I, I don't like to carry cash and, you know... <laughs> Yeah, as long as we as long as we have a replacement, right? That's why we're exactly. so you know that's yeah. why that's why we're here. Exactly. Um, that's why you're here. But yeah. you know, not everybody has access, right? People <laughs> deserve access in their in a free and open society to something like physical cash. Yes, yes, that's all. You know, and a lot of people don't even have a smartphone, so there's many things to it. But negative interest rate that you can save your money, you need to spend your money. You can only spend so much. They surveil it. Yeah, so no wonder Tom wants they could to perfect, perfectly tax it. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Did it, did it, did it, is that on the list too? That that should be uh, on the list, right? Uh, right. It certainly makes uh, knowing what everybody is doing with their money and when, when a transaction is taking place easier for the government to determine <laughs> when they literally have now the ledger sitting in there, you know, on a server. <laughs> yeah, but they, they can automatically automatically tax you. You don't even need to do anything. And then they can just uh, uh, play with the negative interest rate that is higher, it's lower, depending on, on what they want. Right. So they can certainly tax you and do whatever they want. But I guess if you like it and you do want to work on the CBDC, you can apply on LinkedIn <laughs> for a senior application developer uh, for digital currency. This, this is for the Federal Reserve Bank on, of uh, San Francisco. They'll pay you between 110000 to 176000 uh, to work on it. And within 24 hours, there are 45 anti-Monero, anti-liberty, anti-privacy people, I guess, that uh, applied <laughs> for mm. the position. So and there's one or, or they're double agents and they're looking to sabotage, you know, you, you never know. Exactly. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. But they were talking about how in the article, how major economies across the world test CBDCs and India onboarded 50,000 users and 5,000 merchants to test out its recently launched digital rupee. You know how they've done that? They've taken away a lot of the cash in circulation. So people are actually forced to use the CBDC. And we talked about Nigeria. They're doing the same, uh, taking cash away and then pushing their Inaira, which has only 0.5% uh, usage of their CBDC. So. Yeah, this we onboarded so many people to CBDC. We took their cash away, so they didn't have anything. <laughs> Any I will say though, and I've said this before, I, I do think you will see adoption, 
essentially by mandate through pressure. You know, oh, you want to get that um, that check in the mail, the rebate check that everybody's getting because of the bad economy? Well, you'll get whatever, 25% more if you accept it in the form of CBDC, right? Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. So, all right, all right. Why would I say no to that? I, yeah. I, you know, I got to feed my family and, you know, and it's not their problem, right? So the government has this ability to force, essentially force everybody into this and they're they have every incentive to do so. I mean, look what we saw with COVID, right? They, they that one of the things that came out of COVID was everybody now uses QR codes. QR codes were around forever, right? But nobody really was like there was never broad adoption, especially I mean here in the US, like it really was not adopted. And then post post COVID, boom, it's like you go to a restaurant, it's like, oh, where's the where's the QR code? You know, like when, yeah. you know, if you're my parents now are like QR coding, like, so, you know, so to, to say, you know, to look at uh, the adoption now of CBDCs where it's first launching and to assume like, oh, people aren't going to take it, uh, you know, if COVID and any other things we've seen in the past with how governments have this ability to push things on people is mm -hmm. evidence. It's, we're we're going to see it with CBDCs for sure. For sure. People yeah. will take it. Yeah. Most people don't care. Oh, it's more money. Just like with the... The stimulus check. Oh, it's extra money. It's just extra money. It's not going to hurt the economy right. in any way. Right. Yeah. And potentially, it's add, you know, it's adding a lot of convenience to your life, right? It's all those things, you know. Um, and so, yes. and there's going to be, you know, commer just like you see commercials and public messages nonstop of why you need to get vaccinated every every two weeks. I mean, there's going to be similar things like you know, you're going to see it on public public messages like reminding you uh, you should use cbdc's <laughs> like, it's, it's gonna happen right yeah. that, that's gonna be the push it's like windows whenever i go i use linux but whenever i go back into windows do you want windows 11 no are you sure okay but <laughs> you, were, you should really use it not really okay one more time it's they're gonna do it like this they will push the masses into it 100 percent for sure just like the imf is helping jordan's uh, central bank for implementing a retail CBDC. And we, each week it's a new country. <laughs> we talked about Oman, we talked about Russia, we talked about uh, uh, Turkey. So all the countries would essentially want a, a CBDC. And uh, there's one thing that I wanted to mention. Yes, so the RCBDC, which is um, Jordan's uh, potential CBDC, may offer some benefits, but it does not necessarily address pain points. What are the pain points? low financial lit literacy, okay? And the second is a persistent cash culture mm -hmm. are among the pain points and our, our CBDC would not address. Um, yeah, so Jordan is, uh, I think, uh, using a lot of uh, cash. They have a permanent <laughs> persistent cash culture. It's, and it's a cultural problem. How do we have yeah. this <laughs> cultural <laughs> issue? These people seem to like liberty. How do we, how do we destroy that? <laughs> it's gonna be a real problem for CBDCs. Yeah, people. it's a pain point. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy so sad. Yeah. Oh. it's crazy all and, right and, um, oh yeah let's talk about uh, trocador just one more thing guys if, okay. uh, in case you don't like all of this well guess what you can simulate rates via api create trades check transactions use their non-payment gateway solution create invoices with their payment generator all through the invisible internet project which is a networking layer that allows for anonymous peer-to-peer uh, -peer communications. And Trocador now has it. So they added to ITP or they added yeah. Trocador. So very cool. Oh, um, great. It's, 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 it's faster than Tor, right? Uh, we, they're, they're a part of a adoption alley at Mineratopia. So that should be cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome. Awesome. So guys. Beautiful. Awesome. Beautiful. Awesome. Gorgeous. <laughs> do you uh, want just, to uh, bring... We'll do the viewers on stage. Up? Then, yeah. Back up. We'll do the viewers on stage. I'll do the viewers on stage. I think, wait, Tony, you have something you else, have to, something say? else wanna... to say? Yeah, two more things. So first, for people watching, if you want to check, check out the links, they're in the description. So you can check them out and read them for your own. And then second, I think my code should work now. So if you want... Yes, to I do. I fixed it, so... Yeah. Tony. So Work now, yeah. <laughs> Promo code Tony. <laughs> yeah. Difficult. I'm sure, people will forget, <laughs> but it works now. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Perfect. All righty. Okay. okay. Thank you, Tony. Right, Appreciate yeah. it. Yes. Yeah, we'll stick around if you can. We'll do viewers on stage. Yeah. Yep. Thank Just you. questions in the audience Let's for Vero. Do this.